Okay, so, uh, new quest homework. This one is for homeworks for momentum and impulse. So this one will be tied to, at least for our notation, homework number 7A. Well, the only one for 7, anyway. But these problems will deal with momentum impulse. Okay, so, uh, taking a look at these. Uh, one of the questions, it's actually a multi-part question, three-part question. So pay close attention to that, because I know a lot of people overlook them. The information is given in the first part of the question, and then it pertains to additional parts as well. Um, each croquet ball in a set has a mass of 0 0.53 kilograms. So we're dealing with masses that are 0 0.53 kilograms. Croquet is a game with basically, I could be getting this wrong, but I think it's the one with the little hammer things that you knock croquet balls around the yard with. Um, each of the croquet balls, apparently, has a mass of 0 0.53 kilograms, at least according to the information that I've got. I am not the croquet whisperer, so I could be wrong. Anyway, the info that I've got is 0 0.53 kilograms. Uh, the green ball, traveling at 13.6 meters per second, strikes the blue ball, which is at rest. Assuming that the balls slide on frictionless surface and all collisions are head-on, Find the final speed of the blue ball in each of the following situations. Here's a little bit of information on this. The person who wrote this is very right to describe it that way. It sounds weird because normally when you play croquet, it's not sliding on a frictionless surface. The reason we're doing that is it turns out when you have things that are rolling, there's extra stuff that goes into play with something called rotational mechanics. Now, we're not covering that just yet or at all, depending on which class you're in. Um, so, this one sounds a little strange, but that's why we have that in there. You don't need to worry about it. What you want to imagine is we have the green croquet ball moving forward, and it has a speed of velocity. My initial velocity for the green ball is 13.6. Ooh, I like that number. 13.6 meters per second. Uh, 13.6, if I'm not mistaken, is the specific gravity of mercury, and it's also the ionization energy for hydrogen, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, um, feel free to ignore all of that. It's completely irrelevant information. But 13.6 is a cool number, and it shows up a lot in nature. Anyway, all right. The green ball is flying through time and space towards the blue ball. And the initial for the blue ball is actually zero meters per second. It's a lot like the billiard balls that we looked at in class. Now, in class, I didn't mention whether they were rolling or not. Technically, the way we looked at them, they wouldn't actually be rolling. They'd be sliding. So don't worry about it too much. What we're doing is we're basically setting it up where don't worry about the rotational mechanics stuff, which can complicate things a little bit. We're going to have a collision between the green ball and the blue ball here, and then in the first one, they say the green ball stops moving after it strikes the blue ball. So the final velocity for the green ball is actually zero meters per second. What they want to know is what is the final velocity for the blue ball. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a system like we talked about in class. In this system, as long as we have both of the things that are involved in the collision, there are no significant external forces. We might have gravity pulling down, we have a normal force holding them up, but as we talked about in class, none of those should be changing the momentum of our system. It's not gonna make the balls speed up or slow down. That's the point in here that they have about frictionless. So that's why we're assuming they're sliding, among other things. Because friction might slow these things down. In this case, the way we've set up the problem, we're going to ignore that. Since we have no significant external forces, that means, our initial momentum is conserved, which means that it will be equal to our final momentum. My initial momentum is the momentum of each of the individual objects. So I'm going to have mv initial for the green ball plus mv initial for the blue ball. And that's going to be equal to my final momentum because it is conserved, so that is m the final, I apologize, I should actually be putting vector signs on these, plus the mass of the blue ball times the final velocity of the blue ball. Again, as we've talked about in class, 
and at other points. Momentum is a vector, and it points the same direction as the velocity, so we do need to keep track of direction in this. On this problem, I do not think that direction is actually going to be a big issue, because basically we always have things moving to the right. Some of your other homework problems, keep an eye out for them. So we were told the mass of each of these is 0 0.53 kilograms, and we know the initial velocity for this one was 13.6 meters per second. Plus, well, the mass of the blue ball, which is 0 0.53 kilograms, but its initial velocity is 0 meters per second, so we don't get any momentum from that. Over here, at the end, what we're going to set this equal to, well, our final momentum for the green ball is 0 0.53 times 0, because they say that the green one actually comes to a stop at the end. And we're going to have 0 0.53 times v1. And we can go through and we can solve all of this, but real quick, I'm going to leave this in terms of what we've got here. 0 0.53 kilograms times 13.6 meters per second. This is what we start with, because there are no significant external forces. It is also what we end with. That is equal to 0 0.53 kilograms times my final velocity. I've got 0 0.53 kilograms on both sides. I can multiply this out and find out what that number is, but if all I'm going to do is divide by 0 0.53 kilograms, I just get 13.6. My final velocity for the blue ball, when the green ball comes to a stop, 13.6 meters per second. <coughs> Let me double check. Yes, good, because otherwise I'd have issues with it. Um, as a side note on that, uh, this is one that we may or may not have looked at in class, but this is also an example of a, uh, sorry, of an elastic collision. We can find that our kinetic energy is actually conserved in this as well. If we have two things that have the same mass, when one hits into the other, if it's an elastic collision, it will have to transfer all the kinetic energy. The first one will come to a dead stop, as long as the other one was stopped, and then the other one will continue going. In fact, if you kind of don't pay close attention to it, it looks like one of them just keeps going through the other, because the total momentum of the system won't change. All right, that's the first part. Second part says, okay, same scenario, except this time, the final velocity of the green ball, for me, is 2.3, wait, yeah, 2.3 meters per second. Now, they don't specifically specify, oh, they do, they do. It says, after the collision at 2.3 meters per second in the same direction. So basically what's happening here is the blue goes off and the green is still moving we still know what the initial momentum was. In fact, while I didn't solve for it, we know that our initial momentum, because all of it was coming from the green ball, take a look above if you want, 0 0.53 kilograms times 13.6, come on board, meters per second. I multiply these out. Come on, calculator. 0.53 times 13.6, I end up with my total momentum, which I never found last time because it wasn't really convenient, 7.208, I might call this 7.21 kilogram meter per second. That's fine. As long as you keep three significant figures, you should be fine for the quest homework. Four isn't going to be bad. I'm not going to complain. We're going to compare that to our final momentum. Here's one where it's a little bit tricky. Well, not really. Keep using it the way that we have before. We've got the momentum of the green ball. We said that it's going to end this time at 2.3 meters per second, and it has a mass of 0 0.53, plus the momentum of the blue ball, which is 0 0.53 times we don't know its final velocity. But this is what I end with. This is what I start with, so they must be equal to each other. If I multiply this out, 0.53 times 2.3, I end up with, for the green, 1.219 kilogram meter per second plus 0 0.53 times V1. Okay, I 
can subtract the 1.219. So I'm going to take 7.208 minus 1.219. Again, you could do this with three significant figures. I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this just for my own amusement. 5.989, which probably to three significant figures, well, 5.99, although if you rounded these, it might have come up to just 6.0, but that's fine. Equals 0 0.53 times my final velocity. I can divide both sides by 0 0.53. I find that my final velocity in this circumstance is 11.3 meters per second. 11.3. All right. And one final scenario. They ask one more. They say that the final velocity for the green ball is going to be 0 0.4 meters per second. It's moving a little bit more slowly. Quick conceptual question. What do you think is going to happen to the blue ball compared to the other ones? Will it be moving faster, slower, or the same as maybe the last one? Well, since the green ball in the last one was moving 2.3 meters per second, it's moving slower, which means that momentum has to go somewhere. So if we have less momentum in the green ball, we'll have more momentum in the blue ball. Well, once again, no significant external forces. We know, luckily we checked it just a moment ago, that the total momentum that we start off with is 7.208 kilogram meter per second. And that is going to be equal to 0 0.53 kilograms times 0 0.4 meters per second plus 0 0.53 V1. We go through, I'm going to do this one much more quickly. Uh, let's see, 0.4 times 0.53. It's going to be just the same as we saw before, 7.208 minus that value. It comes up to 0 0.212. I end up with the following. 6.996 kilogram meter per second is equal to 0 0.53 V final. So pretty much done. Divide this by 0.53. And we find that the final velocity of the blue ball in this case is 13.2 meters per second. Survey says, there we go, 13.2. All right. One quick thing that I want to point out, because some of you, when you start playing around with the, uh, the numbers, or other people who are watching, you might point out, well, we keep multiplying by the mass, and then we divide by the mass, we can actually have the mass drop out in each of these, because all of the croquet balls have the same mass, and we can actually do this as a velocity balance, which is fine. Numerically, you could do that, and in case you're thinking of that, that's something that would work in this problem. That does not mean that I don't want to just fly through this at the simplest possible thing. The reason I've shown you this is because this approach, if you do this, will work if the mass isn't the same. I'm trying to demonstrate not the fastest and simplest way to do this. I'm trying to show you one of the most thorough ways so that if you learn this approach, you can solve any of the problems. I'm certain you can go through and with many of the problems we've got, you can find some shortcuts. You can do it much quicker and easier, and that's wonderful. But if you don't know how to solve it a thorough way, I'm eventually going to throw a problem at you that's much trickier. So, something to think about. Here we go.